my name is Fiona Bruce and this is EBBE News. We're live here at Hinksy Lake and we're going to meet Hannah Smith who claims she can walk on water. Let's go see what she has to say for herself. This is a live news report from EBBE and we are thrilled to have you here with us this afternoon. Just to remind you, I am Fiona Bruce and I'm reporting this live from Hinksy Lake. Hi, Hannah Smith. Hello. I'm Fiona Bruce. It's an honour to meet you. Thank you. Can you tell us today? our audience watching EBBE News, what you're going to do. I am going to walk on water. You're going to do what? I'm going to walk on this lake. Your feet are going to walk over water? Yes, absolutely. Why are you going to attempt to do this? Well, I read about Jesus doing it in the Bible and I thought, if he can do it, so can I. I am absolutely fascinated by this claim that you've made. How confident are you that you can walk on water live on EBBE News? I am 110% confident. Wow. Straight after the break, we're going to watch Hannah Smith walk on water. live on EBBE News, what just happened? Well, I stepped off the edge and I just fell in. On a scale of one to soaking, how wet are you? Soaking. Hannah is soaking wet. What went wrong? I don't understand. I read about Jesus walking on water. Why can't I do the same? We're not really sure why Hannah Smith failed to walk on water, but we're going to read our Bible story now and find out about Jesus being able to walk. Hi everyone, welcome back to Sunday Stories for Families. We are so excited that you're tuning in again to watch this with us. Hannah has dried off now after that attempt to walk on water. Wasn't she silly? Surely nobody can walk on water. We all know that. Every time we jump in at the pool or at the beach, you just go right through into the water. You can't walk on water. Well, maybe you can. We're going to read the story from the Bible now, a true story about someone who is able to walk on water. Hannah's going to read that for us now. So our reading today is from Mark chapter 6. If you have a Bible at home with you, why not read along with us? Or if not, the words will come up here on the screen. So we're reading Mark chapter 6, starting at verse 45. Then Jesus told his followers to get into the boat and go to Bethsaida on the other side of the lake. Jesus said he would come later. He stayed there to tell the people they could go home. After sending them away, he went into the hills to pray. That night, the boat was in the middle of the lake. Jesus was alone on the land. He saw the followers working hard to row the boat because the wind was blowing against them. At some time between three and six o'clock in the morning, Jesus came to them, walking on the water. He continued walking until he was almost past the boat. But when his followers saw him walking on the water, they thought he was a ghost and cried out. They all saw him and were terrified. But Jesus spoke to them and said, Have courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Then he got into the boat with them, and the wind became calm. The followers were greatly amazed. They had seen Jesus make more bread from the five loaves, but they did not understand what it meant. Their minds were closed.
Jesus. Even from Eden we read, the serpent will be crushed by the seed of Eve, because all glory belongs to the Son. Every story pointing to the Holy One, like when Abraham put Isaac on the altar, he pulls a knife for God, he never falters, faithful to his promise, he would provide a substitute ram for the sacrifice. Now he gave commandments so we could see his holiness and our desperate need. There were so many temporary sacrifices, none of them were perfect, no. But Christ is the prophet soul, and they were not liars. God would send his very own son to be Messiah. Rescue, redeem, restore, reclaim. Every saint loves his holy name, because he died on the cross to take our place. The final substitute and eternal grace, and he rose from the grave and up to the throne. Until he comes again to gather his own. Wow, Hannah, that Bible story was amazing. Isn't Jesus amazing? Yeah, so cool. Let me get this straight again. Just remind me. So the the disciples are in a boat on a lake by themselves. Jesus, he's on the shore. And it's really late at night. And the wind starts to pick up. And they're trying to roll, but it's really hard work. And things are going a bit wrong. It's starting to get stormy. They're probably a bit worried. Jesus isn't with them. But then Jesus walks on water to go and rescue them. Yeah. Is that right? Jesus walked on water? Yeah, it's shocking, isn't it? It's really surprising. The disciples were surprised and we're surprised now. Well, how did they react? Remind me. They were shocked. They were terrified. They thought Jesus was a ghost because they didn't understand what he was doing. But Hannah, we... Earlier on, we saw in the drama that, that you said that you could walk on water and you, you tried to walk on water, but you just went straight down because people can't walk on water. No, no, people can't walk on water. Normal people like me and like Sarah can't walk on water. Neither could you if you tried it. But that shows us something really important about Jesus. It shows us that Jesus is not a normal human being, but that he's... God. He's a human being, but he's also God. And that means that he has God's power. So he can do things that we can't, like walking on water. But Hannah, remind me of some of the other things that we've seen Jesus do. Maybe you guys can remember at home, we've been watching and following Jesus' life for the past few weeks at Sunday Stories. What what are some of the things that Jesus has done? Maybe pause the video and chat with your family. Hannah, can you remind us? Yeah, we've seen loads of things, haven't we, that Jesus did that a normal person can't do. So this week we've got Jesus walking on water. The week before we had Jesus feeding 5,000 people with just five loaves of bread and two pieces of fish. And the week before that, Jesus brought a dead girl back to life. He raised her from the dead. And the disciples would have been with Jesus when these things happened. They saw him do amazing things. Surely yeah. they would have known then that he was not a normal person, that he was God. But but in this story, I think it said that they were afraid and they, they didn't understand what was happening. Why? Why were the disciples afraid? Yeah, they were afraid because they didn't understand who Jesus was. They didn't understand that he was God and that that was the reason that he could walk on water and do all these other amazing things. And the Bible tells us that the reason they didn't understand was because their minds were closed or their hearts were hardened. What does it mean to have a a hard heart? Well, let's think of it like Play-Doh. Have you got some Play-Doh with you, Sarah? 
let me just see. I've got yeah. some Play-Doh here. So you all know what Play-Doh is like. You can squeeze it and change it into lots of different shapes. You can make it into a round ball or you can flatten it right down so it's like a pancake. And the reason you can change the shape of Play-Doh is because it's soft, isn't it? You can bend it and shape it however you want with your hands. But imagine if we left this Play-Doh out overnight and we came back tomorrow and it would be all dry and really hard and then we wouldn't be able to shape it anymore. It would be stuck in the shape that we'd left it in. And that's like the disciples' hearts. They were hard, so even though they saw all these different things that Jesus did, their hearts didn't change and their minds didn't change, so they didn't understand who Jesus was. But what about us, Hannah? Do we have soft hearts or, or hard hearts? I, I would really like to understand who Jesus is. How can I do that? Yes, yeah, so we today are exactly like Jesus' followers. We too can have hard hearts if God hasn't opened our eyes to see who Jesus is. And how do we get a soft heart? Well, we can't do it on our own. We need God's help. But thankfully, God will, is willing to help us and we can ask him to soften our hearts and show us who Jesus is and how amazing he is. Hannah, I have a question. Can God soften anyone's heart? Yeah, God can soften anyone's heart. Wow, that's amazing. Maybe you can think of some people in your life, or maybe yourself, maybe you don't really see who Jesus is yet, and you'd like to. Or maybe you can think of family or friends who you would like to see and understand who Jesus is. And you can pray for them, that God would soften their heart, or soften your heart, so that you can see who Jesus is. You can see that he is God and that he is a rescuer. And we're going to do that now. We're going to pray that we would have soft hearts that can be shaped like the Play-Doh, can be shaped so that we can understand and see who Jesus is and know that he is God's son. This amazing person who can do amazing things and that came to save us. And as I'm praying, maybe you can think in your head, of friends or family, people at school or people you do play dates with that you could pray for as well. Pray along with me that they would have soft hearts to see who Jesus is. I'm going to pray for us now. Father God, we thank you so much for Jesus. We thank you for how amazing he is and that he was able to walk on water and rescue his followers. And we pray now, Father, that you would help us to have soft hearts that are ready to learn about Jesus and to see how amazing he is, to see that he is your son. And we pray for our friends or our family who haven't seen who Jesus is yet. We pray that you would soften their hearts so that they could see Jesus and be amazed by who he is and want to follow him. Amen. Amen. Kids, thanks so much for listening. If you want to think more about this story and about who Jesus is, there'll be some questions in the description box below that you can think about, maybe with your friends or your brothers and sisters or your parents. Thanks for watching. Thanks. Bye.